This is how to choose a family lawyer. Hi, my name is Mark Joseph and I'm a South Florida family law attorney. And you're here to find out how to choose a family lawyer. If you've seen a lot of my videos, you'll notice that at the end, I'd make reference to having any questions or concerns to contact my office and to set a consultation. One thing that I haven't had a chance to get into was actually how to select a family lawyer if you choose to go that route. One thing I always say is the family law process, especially here in the state of Florida, it's made to allow people without attorneys, typically considered pro se's, to go through the court process without a lawyer. However, doing so in a lot of cases can be very problematic. Um, a simple example I can give up is if a man is trying to establish his paternity and although he used to be active in the child's life, no longer has the opportunity to do so, whether it be because the mother just up and left, the mother doesn't allow him or some other circumstance occurs. Now, a lot of the forms that are provided, whether it be online or even through the courthouse of whatever county you go to, they have a lot of general information. And the forms itself is very general and it doesn't list any specific issues. And it's left to you as the person to fill that, that out. And if you don't have legal experience, it's a very tough thing to do. So, why get a lawyer? Firstly, a competent family lawyer is essentially trained and knows how to do what you need to do to get what you want. What I mean by that is looking at these forms, this will probably be one of the first times you do it. Most people have anywhere from one to let's say three or four kids. So you've probably dealt with this maybe one to four times if you've done it every single time by yourself. A lawyer a family lawyer specifically has done this all the time. They know the ins and outs of what needs to be pled, what's required to be in the petition, and how to make sure that petition avoids any of the legal pitfalls that you may fall into that you just wouldn't know otherwise. Um, another aspect of the idea of getting an attorney is the fact that you have someone who understands the process behind you. It may seem easy to just take a look at all of my videos and think you have the ability to run a case from beginning to end. However, a lot of the concern I put in my videos is that if you don't understand anything, to at least consult with me a lawyer, but to any lawyer. Um, at the end of the day, the goal of these videos aren't to just have people come in for my services. The goal of these videos are to make sure that you seek services should you need it. Obviously, I'm going to suggest myself given that they're my videos. But if I'm not in your area, county, or if you just prefer another avenue of attorney, I definitely suggest you seek that. So now to the main point. How do you select this lawyer? Um, my suggestion, the first thing that I hope my client has when meeting with me is that they're comfortable. A client needs to be comfortable with the person they are choosing to represent their interest. That is so important because whatever this lawyer says, unless you have back knowledge or understanding of the legal process, you have no one else to kind of refer it to. So you need to be comfortable with the person who you're seeking advice from or the person who's instructing you on how to move forward on your case. Another consideration is to straight up know how often does your attorney practice family law? Now, there's some attorneys who, aside from practicing family law, they practice a couple other areas. And this is not to discourage or to presume that they don't know what they're doing. I mean, I myself in years previous used to practice other areas before I decided to solely focus on family law. The one thing you do want to make sure is that they know family law. You don't want to fall into a situation where just because they're a licensed attorney, 
they give you this idea that they know how to do family law and they don't because the nuances of family law are great. And you want to make sure that the person you hire to represent your interest knows those nuances, especially if your cases are complicated. Now, if you have an uncontested matter, that is when you and the other party essentially agree and you just need someone to kind of walk you through the court process and, you know, there's not much fighting. It's just you guys agreeing on some documents. Then getting an attorney who understands that area, is, it's not a problem. But if you have issues with relocation, if you've been alienated from your child for an extended period of time, if there's allegations against your uh, moral fitness as a parent, if you're having alimony, equitable distribution, issues such as that, you definitely want to make sure that you have an attorney that's qualified to deal with that. And just because you're an attorney doesn't mean you'd be qualified to deal with that level of family law issue. Another point I'd bring up is price. I mean, it's not a secret that lawyers can be very costly. And depending on the difficulty of the issue or the case, the more money you'll have to pay. Um, there's a lot of different ways that attorneys calculate their services, at least in family law. There is the hourly model, which is what I see is typical, which is the attorney has an hourly rate for their services and they ask you to put in a retainer, which is kind of like an upfront deposit for a certain number of hours of representation. And once that certain number of hours run out, you have to essentially replenish that retainer. But you're essentially paying by the time being used by the lawyer to run your case. Um, obviously, no one really knows how long your case is going to take. And you can assume, but that doesn't mean that that's the length of time your case will exist for. So if it goes over, you have to continue paying. Although this is the typical structure, there's other structures that are that attorneys typically use as well. There is the flat fee agreement where an attorney will just charge you a set amount of money to represent you in your case. And no matter how many hours it takes, that's the amount that you're going to be paying. This is typically good in my experience when you have an attorney who's just dealing with one or two motions or let's say if this is your second attorney and your case is ready for trial and basically you only need them for trial. So there's only so many hours that's going to happen on the case because the case is about to be over. Or again, as I mentioned before, if the case is uncontested, basically no one's fighting, no one's arguing. So it's kind of easier to assess how many hours the case would take. This type of agreement would work well if you know how much your budget is and you do not intend to go over that budget. Now I will warn that a lot of attorneys don't like this type of agreement because what tends to happen in that situation is that they may end up doing more work than in their minds they were paid to do. Now, most ethical attorneys, and I, to be honest, I can't name many of them that I feel like wouldn't do this. They'll do the work and they'll do it to the best of their abilities. But there's always that opportunity or that situation where someone feels like they're not getting paid enough, so their work kind of declines with that or their effort declines with it. The other end is, if you pay someone a set amount of money, an attorney to a set amount of money for your case, that you may have paid too much, but because you agreed to the flat fee, you're contractually obligated to maintain that fee amount. Obviously, there's a host of other ways attorneys can agree to contract and address your family case. To be very clear in the state of Florida, as of the date of this video, it is illegal for an attorney to do your family case on a contingency fee basis. In other words, they cannot determine how much they're going to pay or, or charge you based on what you receive when your case is completed. There has been situations where an attorney may take a case without a retainer up front, but be expected to pay, be paid later on. 
so long as it's a set amount as opposed to a percentage of what's being collected. The contingency fee type case is typically in a personal injury matters where that's allowed. I can't think of off the top of my head a case where that would be that's not a personal injury. Something else that you should use to consider whether or not to hire a particular attorney is to just honestly ask questions. Um, one thing that I will always say or express to my clients is that, especially during consultations, that now is your time to ask whatever questions that you have in regards to your case. In a consultation, I personally feel that you have a right to understand every aspect of your case within the facts being presented and to have a pretty clear understanding of the scenarios that are before you. Unless your case is a very, very unique set of circumstances, you should, when leaving that attorney's office, know where you can and can't go in regards to your case. And more importantly, if you hire that attorney, how that attorney plans to attack your case. It should be important to note that there is many ways to skin a cat, so to speak. There is a more aggressive litigation heavy approach to dealing with a case. There can be a more amicable approach to dealing with the case and everything in between. Obviously, so long as within the bounds of the law, you have those options. Some attorneys consider themselves a bulldog and in some cases pride themselves on that in which they kind of just want to go head first, charging in, filing motions, getting before the judge, you know, defend your rights, which is fine. And in some cases that's necessary. Other attorneys take the more amicable approach. They feel like you can catch more bees with honey. They'll pick up the other phone, talk to the other attorney, try to work something out, hopefully to leave or create a resolution that's best for everybody without going to court. Obviously, in some cases, that's beneficial as well. It's very hard to say where your case falls into without meeting an attorney. That brings me to my other point. Make sure that attorney's objective. When I mentioned the bulldog attorney or the getting bees with honey other attorney, there is a consideration of their personality that's just innately them. And as a client, you want to have an attorney that represents the way you operate or more importantly, the way you need to operate to further your interest in a case. So you may be a sweet as honey person who feels like, all right, let's be amicable. Let's try to resolve this. And you need an attorney that can address that. But you may fall into a case where you need an attorney that's going to get you the court and have to bogart their way into court in front of the judge and to get the ruling or the decision that's best to further your case. Your case can have all, both, some of that. It can run the gambit. The most important thing is to make sure you have an attorney who can be objective to know what it is your case needs. One last point I'll make before I wrap up is to do your research. There's nothing wrong with searching your lawyer. If that attorney is a Florida bar attorney, there will be some information about him online, whether it be his Florida bar page or possibly some other source paging that he uses, whether he has social media, whether he has an Avo account, whether he has a YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, such as myself, or just, just their name coming up just in a simple Google search. Look your attorney up. It's okay. It's okay to look up if they have reviews and other results and to ask about them. Um, I always feel that any attorney should be able to address their past cases or their past records online, whether it be been put by themselves or by a client, happy or not so happy. But do your research. Make sure you understand the person you're coming to meet because your time is valuable, but so is your money. And you don't want to spend the money that you need to, to get a lawyer to represent your interest if you don't know who that person is.
That concludes my tutorial on how to choose an attorney, or at least a family attorney in the state of Florida. Um, if you're interested, I have some of my other videos. The links will be below. As well as if you're curious about consulting with me, feel free to call my office and we'll set you up with one. My name is Mark Joseph. Thank you for watching.